In the beginning of the film, we witness a young girl leaving her home early on the morning of Christmas Eve, vanishing into the thick fog. Dr. Flores was abruptly awakened by a phone call, a pressing matter that required his immediate presence in his office. A policewoman informed him that Inspector Vogel had experienced an accident, thankfully without any injuries, but he was now in police custody. The authorities were seeking the psychiatrist's assistance to speak with Vogel. Dr. Flores didn't expect Inspector Vogel's return to their area, especially following the well-known case of the missing girl. Nevertheless, Vogel had his motives and was now set on uncovering the real story. It all started before Christmas, as Vogel came to Abshot, a remote Alpine town, to probe the mysterious disappearance of 16-year-old Analo Kesna, who had seemingly vanished without a trace. Inspector Vogel directed Agent Borgi to go with him to the Kesna home. The Kesna said their daughter, Analo, was responsible and did well in school, just like them. Analo was religious and clearly didn't run away, which some rebellious teens do. She wasn't even on social media, as it was against the Brotherhood's rules. Before leaving, Vogel suggested the Kesnas release a public statement, expecting reporters to swarm in. He thought that reporters could gather information faster than the police. As he departed, Maria, Analo's mother, gave Vogel a bracelet made by Analo. Outside, Vogel clapped, grabbing the neighbor's attention, who came out to see what was happening. Vogel was sure that if a crime had happened, it would have drawn attention, leaving no doubt this was an abduction. On that particular morning, Anna Lou had plans to attend the Brotherhood Church but never reached her destination. Just seven minutes after leaving her home, her mobile phone suddenly went offline. Concerned about their daughter's whereabouts, the Kastners, distressed and worried, turned to the public for any information. Inspector Vogel approached the Kastners to learn more about Anna Lou's Brotherhood. Borgi described them as devout believers with strict rules. Since reporters closely watched the police, Vogel decided everyone should wear painter suits, not their regular uniforms, to discreetly conduct their investigation. The headlines are buzzing with the disappearance of Anna Lou. Inspector Vogel, a well-known detective with experience in high-profile cases, is leading the investigation. They've set up a temporary police station in a sports hall, and the team is working diligently. Inspector Vogel is keen on keeping the media's attention on this case. Mr. Kesna paid a visit to the inspector earlier today. He came in person to discuss a matter that's been troubling him. Maria, while cleaning the room, stumbled upon their daughter's diary. Anna Lou had a close friend, Priscilla. In a candid moment, Bruno, Anna Lou's father, admitted to finding Priscilla's number in his daughter's phone. He repeatedly called but stayed silent. Bruno couldn't explain his behavior. Inspector Vogel advised Mr. Kesna to move past the mysterious calls and reunite with his family. In the evening, Vogel crossed paths with Stella Honer, a well-known journalist who had recently arrived in Abshot. Vogel handed over Anna L's diary, noting that from the girl's entries, she appeared quite proper and never defied her parents' rules. It was clear that Anna suspected her mother was snooping in her diary, so there must be another one where she penned her true thoughts. Vogel struck a deal with Stella Honor. She'd create maximum case attention, and he'd share vital info. Anonymously, Stella left a toy kitten by the Kastner house, drawing a crowd praying for Anna Lou. Police watched closely, thinking the culprit might appear. This happened often, and the perp might even take a souvenir. Agent Meyer became suspicious when he noticed a man taking photos in the area. Later on, a skateboarder picked up one of the toy kittens. However, Inspector Vogel ordered everyone to stay inactive for the time being. Vogel strongly believes that Anna Lou went willingly with the person she knew personally, someone she trusted. This suggests that Anna Lou might no longer be alive. At this point, the police's primary goal is to locate the criminal before any evidence of a tragedy emerges. Late in the evening, Vogel got a call from Borgi, who discovered that the skateboarder had a history of photographing couples in public areas. Currently, Mattia, the skateboarder, is under psychiatric evaluation. Vogel then called Stella, notifying her of an impending important development as pledged, granting her a 25-minute lead before potential rivals could act. On New Year's Eve, Vogel broke into Ma's house and stumbled upon a video on his laptop that featured Analo. When Mattia noticed the inspector's presence, he reassured him, expressing his intent to assist. Vogel promised Mattia that he'd receive the recognition he deserved if he led him to Analo. Mattia silently played the next video, revealing that he had been monitoring Analo for quite some time. A suspicious SUV appeared in the footage. 
Vogel told Dr. Flores that Ma's videos were crucial for discovering Analo's surveillance. At that moment, her fate appeared grim, and locals clung to distant culprit hope, but suspected evil in their midst. Previously, Professor Lori Martini emphasized evil as a key literary plot element. Priscilla later flirted with him and discussed her acting aspirations, learning he had a theater club background in college. Priscilla shared her contact info and proposed studying at her place. Loris, though, has a wife, Clea, dealing with job-related depression. Martini was returning late from planning a solo mountain hike. He found out about a missing schoolgirl from his wife, but claimed not to know Anna Luke Kesna, thinking she might have run away, a common teen problem. Clea noticed a hand injury on Loris and asked about it, which he brushed off as a minor scratch. The couple has a 16-year-old daughter, Monica, who's often on social media, and conflicts with her parents over their recent move. Monica misses her old friends, leaving her feeling isolated. Loris understood the need for distance from Priscilla, but couldn't resist sending her a secret message, unknown to Clea. Clea shopped for their daughter's gift. Flyers about Anna's disappearance covered the town, and many volunteers and the police searched nearby areas for the missing girl. Loris had volunteered, and life for the Martini family continued as usual. Monica, as always, avoided talking to her parents, while Clea began considering finding a new job because her husband's salary wasn't enough, and there weren't any job prospects here. However, their tranquil life took a sudden turn when the news featured a car tailing an SUV. It was Loris's SUV for sure. Clea and Monica soon found out about it, but neither of them could make sense of the situation. Loris decided to call the police, asserting that he was the SUV's owner that had been on TV. Agent Borgie from the police informed him that the police weren't involved, and it was the doing of journalists. There had been a leak of information, and Loris was completely unaware that the police had been trailing him. In the meantime, Clee questioned her husband, who was in shock, about his whereabouts on the day the SUV disappeared. Loris hadn't been home until the evening that day because he had gone for a hike in the mountains. The injury on his hand deepened suspicions. The Martini house was swarmed by a horde of reporters the next day, making it impossible for Loris to reach his car. In the midst of this chaos, a car suddenly pulled up nearby, and a man urged Loris to get in. It turned out that the man was the lawyer, Giorgio Levy. According to the lawyer, going to the police wouldn't make any sense. If the video held evidence, Lore would have been arrested a long time ago. The real problem lay with Inspector Vogel, who led the case but seemed uninterested in expert reports and conventional investigative methods. His modus operandi typically involved working through the media. Giorgio Levi was ready to assist, but Loris insisted on consulting with his wife before making any decisions. Giorgio provided Loris with a separate phone for communication, leaving Loris bewildered about the purpose of it all. Giorgio only hinted that things could get worse. The police addressed the media, with Inspector Vogel assuring them of their utmost efforts to locate a now Stella. However, Stella Honer, driven solely by her own interests, provoked the inspector with questions, probing if he feared a repeat of his previous case. As the spouses deliberated on their course of action, they faced the dilemma of being unable to afford legal representation. Loris suggested his wife serve as his lawyer, but Clee objected due to her lack of criminal law knowledge. Shortly after, the police, led by Agent Borgie, arrived with a search warrant. Loris, realizing he was the prime suspect, didn't object to the collection of necessary samples. Experts inspected Loris's SUV, finding it recently cleaned except for some cat hair, with no DNA traces. Agent Borgie expressed concern to Vogel about Maria Kesna's mental state, as she couldn't fathom the schoolteacher's involvement in her daughter's disappearance. Vogel assured they were doing their utmost to solve the case. The couple consulted Giorgio Levi, wondering why Loris wasn't questioned. Giorgio explained Vogel's strategy to stall through the media. According to Giorgio, this wasn't the first time Vogel suspected an innocent person. In a prior case, a man spent four years in prison before his innocence was proven. Priscilla, who had seemed quite unassuming, appeared on television and tearfully claimed that Mr. Martini had messaged her, suggesting they meet. She delivered her lines with such convincing emotion she was indeed a talented actress. Loris tried to reassure his wife that Priscilla was fabricating the story. He had only wanted to provide acting lessons, nothing more. Unbeknownst to the couple, their home was riddled with listening devices, as Vogel had been eavesdropping on them all along. Clea believed in her husband's innocence, but felt it was unfair that their daughter was suffering. 
Thus, Clea decided to take Monica and leave. Loris found himself alone in their now empty house. That very evening, Giorgio Levi arranged a meeting for him with a journalist, Stella Honer, who knew everything about Loris's life, including the recent marital infidelity that had prompted their move to Avat in the hopes of rejuvenating their relationship. Now, everyone regarded Loris as a monster, and he seemed incapable of saving himself. However, an interview with him was highly sought after, with Stella eager to secure it. Loris, though, made it clear that he wouldn't exploit his family's tragedy for financial gain, even if the argument that the money would be helpful didn't sway him. Vogel continued to receive anonymous messages asserting Loris's innocence. Vogel contacted Stella, suspecting her involvement, but she firmly denied sending incriminating messages. Loris faced a severe decline in trust, with no one, not even his family, believing his innocence. At their meeting, away from surveillance, Vogel gave Loris a chance to prove his innocence. Vogel's primary concern was Loris's lack of an alibi for the disappearance day, along with doubts about the suspicious hand wound. The intrigue deepened with cat hair found inside Loris's pet-free SUV. A stray cat had been spotted near the Kesna house before the disappearance, and a bracelet indicated Analo's care for the animal. It seemed the criminal used the cat as bait. Vogel believed finding this cat would be solid evidence of Loris's guilt. Before parting ways, Loris left the inspector with a thought. The gravest sin is vanity. As Loris crossed paths with Mr. Kesna on the street, the two men passed each other silently, leaving Loris uncertain about how to proceed. Suddenly, police cars sped down a remote road, and they discovered a backpack belonging to the missing Analo. Despite the mounting challenges and suspicions, Loris had not been fired and continued to teach at the school. Patricia and Mattia, both students in his class, bore witness to his predicament. Inspector Vogel interrupted the class, asking the students not to pay attention to him as he observed Loris Martini. At one point, he applauded the lesson's quality and discreetly mentioned finding Anna L's backpack. If the DNA matched Loris's, it could be problematic. The psychiatrist suspected Vogel might have manipulated evidence to incriminate Loris. Vogel simply commented that justice was of little concern to anyone. After Loris Martini's arrest, Vogel intended to leave Abshot. However, he got another anonymous message, leading to an immediate call. The woman introduced herself as Beatrice Lehman, a journalist, and said she had solid evidence of Loris Martini's innocence. Beatrice encouraged Vogel to look up Man in the Fog online. Vogel found a missing persons report for C.A. Hillman from 30 years ago. In a meeting, Beatrice shared her lifelong commitment to the Caddy Hillman case and linked the recent girl's disappearance to five similar cases in a wide area. She believed there was a common obsession, with all these girls taken by the elusive man in the fog, indicating Loris Martini's innocence. On the day of Anna Lokesna's disappearance, Beatrix received a package, and inside was the girl's diary. Vogel asked Beatrix what she wanted in return, and she made it clear that all she wanted was justice. Vogel carefully read through the diary and discovered that Analo had met a nice guy named Oliver during a seaside vacation and had fallen in love. In a gesture of affection for Oliver, she had drawn the letter O on her wrist with a pen. Among the diary's contents, Vogel found a photo meant for him, depicting a cross in the woods. Vogel made his way to the location depicted in the photo and began digging. Despite hearing footsteps nearby, he persisted in his excavation until he unearthed a package containing a cassette. On the video, Vogel saw a person in a concealed suit, with Analo sitting in the background, appearing to be under the influence of substances. What he witnessed on that video left Vogel in shock. Understanding the location of the video, Vogel went there with the intention of destroying the cassette, but a strange sound distracted him. Suddenly, a group of journalists stormed into the building, and Stella accused the inspector of attempting to destroy evidence. In the present, Vogel admitted to Dr. Flores that he had been naive in trusting Beatrice, who handed him over to Stella Honer as a form of payback for the years of humiliation she endured when nobody believed in the man in the fog. Vogel also revealed that Analo's story had awakened compassion in him for the first time. Dr. Flores recognized that the current turn of events wasn't a coincidence, and Vogel openly stated he had returned to Avot for justice. Loris's reputation was restored, and journalists sought interviews. Importantly, his wife and daughter returned to him. Giorgio Levi suggested that Loris consider suing the police for slander and wrongful arrest, potentially leading to substantial compensation for his family. 
Meanwhile, the police reopened the case of six girls missing over 30 years. Agent Borgie's interview revealed Vogel's need to leave town due to his vanity. The police followed a false lead in lost time. Vogel met with Stella, handing her a diary despite their disputes and competition. The inspector and the journalist collaborated when it suited their interests. Vogel appeared on live TV with Loris. He noticed the O on Loris's wrist, realizing Lori Martini was their true target, and the man in the fog wasn't involved. Initially, Lori had intentionally deceived Vogel, knowing his reputation. Loris decided to exploit the situation. While literature's villains are often driven by hatred, real-life motives are often about money. On the fateful morning when Anna left home and saw her teacher trying to catch a cat, she agreed to help him, capitalizing on her distraction. Loris attacked her, executing his sinister plan after Anna's last breath. He then noticed the letter O drawn on her hand with a pen. Now Vogel realizes that Loris had initially targeted him, and there might have been no man in the fog. It could have been a product of the journalist's imagination. The idea was to ensure nobody found the body, but Loris, like Vogel, succumbed to vanity and drew the letter O on his wrist. Dr. Flores suspected that after the live broadcast, Vogel pursued and eliminated Loris. Vogel didn't resist arrest, and even told Dr. Flores it was nice talking to him. Dr. Flores returned to his everyday life, carrying his most significant secret. He was the man in the fog all along.